Um, first of all, I'm on my best behavior today, being a, an American from America. Um, you talked about our democracy. Of course, we're closed, the government. So, you know. so that doesn't get us anything right now, the democracy. Um, but uh, what I know about cricket is what Dennis showed us this morning. In fact, if you, if the, for those that were here 18 months ago, we were in Twickenham, which is the rugby national stadium. And I know as much about rugby as I do about cricket. We had a very distinguished speaker there that was speaking at the, at the gala dinner, uh, Will Carling, which I'm sure most people in this room would know who Will Carling is. I didn't. We were having uh, cocktails on the pitch after the sessions. And I'm standing there talking with a couple of the people, couple of the people that were at the conference, and uh, you know, just having a conversation. And a gentleman walks up and stands right next to me, and I could see these two gentlemen that were there were kind of like, you know, giving us, you know, wide-eyed and all. And somebody said, "Oh, Mr. Carling, Mr. Carling, this, that," and 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 I'm like, God, this guy probably played rugby before. So I, I did pick up on that. So I turned to him and I said, "Have you ever played here?" <laughs> To which he uh, chuckled a little bit and kind of introduced himself. And uh, I was a little embarrassed. But, uh, but anyway, he was a very nice gentleman. And uh, we enjoyed the rest of the evening. So I'm here today. This, this will be a little bit of a different presentation than what you've seen so far, because I am a user of the eGain products. Um, I'm one of their clients, maybe like you out there. And um, what I'm going to go through is, and I'll go fairly quickly through the um, getting us up to where we've actually deployed the products, because this is a long project. Um, I've been with Avon for a little over three years now. And for the last you know, three years was when we started designing our project. And we finally deployed it in the first market, a pilot market, in April of this year. Um, just to give you an idea, the, the, the project that I'm talking about is, um, is called Avon Promise. And it's our promise to our representatives. We are a B2B business. Our customers are the Avon representatives out there. And our project was not just a customer care or you know, a transformation in that respect. We built a full SAP, ERP, CRM backend solution for all the ordering, all the financial pieces. So the, the customer care part of it is a very large part of the, of the um, presentation and, and the project, um, but it's, it's part of a bigger project, um, the biggest project that Avon has ever encountered. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Avon itself, um, about the promise. Why, why did we transform our key design elements that we were looking for, um, where we're using eGain. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the build and deploy part of it and some learnings that hopefully I can give you um, some of the areas that we found the most challenging in, in what we did. Um, so Avon is sold in over 100 markets worldwide, thousands of products, 6.5 million Avon representatives out there throughout the world. We sell four lipsticks per second worldwide. <laughs> Think about that number. I mean, because that one still, every time I say it, I go, wow, that's, that's pretty, that's a lot. As, as, as I said, we're, we're a global company. We're worldwide. So, so what's this Avon promise? We did, four years ago, we did market research. We have our own internal market research group that went out and started talking to our representatives worldwide, finding out, because Avon was kind of stagnant. We, we weren't growing um, like we needed to. And we, we started talking to the representative to say, what, what is it that we need to do? What do you like about us? What do you not like about it? We found out they don't like all the challenges they had just doing business with us. We made it hard for them to do business with us. They loved our product. 
They loved being direct sellers. They loved the opportunity to sell our products and actually make some money, you know, contribute to their family. It was a, it was a great, you know, we call ourselves the company for women. And, that was, and, and that's really good, and that's what the, rep, the representative is to our company. But we weren't making it easy for her. So we wanted, so it's, it's, it's simply maximizing the representative experience. That's what it is. We, have, we um, implemented a project of, we've had at its peak about 250 employees solely dedicated to this project in one location in New York. Um, we brought in people from 15 countries throughout the world, um, expatted them into the US, and have been working on this project since. So it's, it's a huge commitment. The biggest commitment, biggest project Avon has done in its 125 plus years um, by a factor of a two or three times. So it's, it's, it's huge. The Avon Care Center, as uh, you'll hear me say, ACC or Avon Care Center, um, it supports all the processes for the representative from her planning her campaign, submitting her order, order track and receipt payment, returning products, everything along the way, the Avon Care Center is there. Most of the Avon care centers out there are very, let's say, 1970s call center centric. You know, telephones, some of our call centers still have, I call it green screens, mainframe applications. Um, I mean, we're, we're back there. And uh, you know, this project is to help us get beyond there. I got to tell you, listening to some of the other presentations and, and knowing that we made our design 18 months ago, everything just moves so fast that I feel like I've got to get some more stuff that I haven't planned for yet. So it's a, it's a fast moving business. So I mean, simply, we, we, we had to transform because we had to address the needs of our representatives. Our current systems and processes were, are aging. Um, not only our call center systems, our ordering systems and everything that supports her. We needed to get more standard system-wise and process-wise. I talked about 100 um, markets worldwide. There's probably 100 different systems that they each use different, even though we have some base systems. So it, it's really difficult for us to roll out a big change across the, the globe. Yeah, I mean, we really can't right now, not until we implement this. Uh, the technical sophistication of our global markets, um, as, as you can imagine, we've got markets that, that are very good and into the digital side of things. We got some markets that aren't. So we, we truly have to build for the brand new representative who's you know, 20 years old, knows how to do everything on her phone to the 85-year-old representative who writes her order out on a piece of paper and expects us to honor that. And I got a couple stories about what we saw when we went live that were interesting. <laughs> All right, so just to get to the, to the key design elements, and, and I'll go through this quickly. We wanted to integrate, we, we did select SAP as the backbone as the uh, back office. So we wanted to be able to integrate with SAP, CRM, and the ERP. Wanted our multi-channel, voice, chat, email, self-service through the virtual assistant, and look at social media. We wanted a knowledge base and a knowledge solution. Um, felt really good about some of the things that were said earlier because that's why we, we needed a knowledge base. Uh, the no more, um, Answer shopping, I like to call it, where you, know, you call and get one answer, you look up, get another answer, you know, none of that, can't have that. We, we wanted to deflect live interactions, of course. I mean, that's, that's call center 101. You have to do that. Um, we also needed an advanced messaging capability to our representatives. One of the things that we didn't fully consider when we were building our back end and our web front end that went with it, that was another piece of the project. I mean, we're completely redoing our web 
and the back end, is all of the business-related messaging. We received your order. Your order is being picked. Your order is being shipped. Your order is going to be at your door in one hour. You know, things like that. And um, eGain, being a partner of ours, when we started having issues with that, I went to Frank and said, Frank, you guys do some stuff like this, don't you? And uh, we got to the point where we ended up buying eGain Notify, their messaging hosted solution, to do that piece. Um, frankly, it helped us out immensely because we weren't prepared for that piece of it. Um, right, wrong, or indifferent, we thought our web people were going to do that for us. And they said, oh, no, not us. So, challenge. We wanted to support our voice at a representative program, and I'll, I have a slide on that that I'll talk about. And, and really having a centralized governance. I talked about every market doing everything their own way. We have to start bringing this in so that we can be standard, standard processes, things like that. That was just not a part of what we were doing. Talked about the multi-channel voice, virtual assistant, chat, email. We're using all of them now. The global knowledge base, whether you pick up the phone and call an ACC representative or agent, or the representative is looking through virtual assistant and getting information, she's getting the same information. That's a key. It saves us a lot. Our voice of the representative. The, the other thing, and this, and, and this is, when, when I joined Avon, um, you know, and I started, I did a, a little like mini world tour going out to some call centers and seeing. Like every call center I would go to, they would show me, we have all this data that we collect. We do surveys, we do this, we do that. I said, well, what do you do with it? Well, nothing. So, so it's like, you know, a lot of data and no information. The voice of the representative program is our opportunity to take and, and we put in, in a real life process to collect that information from all the different channels, see what our representatives are talking about, see what they're doing, feed that back into the business. Um, you know, I, I will tell you that the, the Avon call centers are not really anything to the company at time, many of them, as a necessary evil. They, they, they have that, that thought process that we, we, we can't really, you know, we have to have one so then they don't, they don't really use it the way they should. This kind of program, we want to feed, feed information to the business, increase sales. Let's, let's tell them what the representatives are having trouble with. What are they challenged with? Um, this program is, is uh, and, we're, and we're starting to see some results of it in our pilot market. Talked about the, the governance and the, and the um, center of excellence that we're going to have for ACC. It's really, you know, center of excellence for this is really it's the people, process, and technology. We've talked a lot about technology here. Um, a lot of the rest of my presentation is going to go into the, the people and the process part and the change management part because that's been some of the biggest challenges we've had. And I wouldn't be here if I wasn't uh, going to talk a little bit about eGain and what they've done for us. We use our knowledge base. Um, guided help for our call center agents, a virtual assistant for our representatives through the e-commerce system, email administration through contact us off of our e-commerce system, and the notify message center, all of the messages going back and forth. So as you can see from this slide, I mean really, they're Self-service and assisted, they're you know, guiding on, on, the, on the left you see there and what they do for us, um, assisting with all the different communication channels, and even getting to serve you know, with co-browse, um, you know, onboarding people, the messaging that we're doing, all the multiple services. And, and, and I guess the, the, the one thing that, that, that drew us to e-gain the most is probably the flexibility in working with us. Because we, we had a, a design in mind, 
Then we would do our fit gap and our blueprinting to figure out how we wanted to do everything with Egain there with us to help and guide us. Um, and, and to be able to work within all of the different requirements that we had within our own, within our own bigger project. Um, think of what I'm talking about, my piece, is probably 15% of the total Promise project. Um, so it was sometimes difficult for me to grab the attention that was needed. Um, everybody kind of looks at the call center as the, the tail on the end of the dog a little bit. Um, until it's needed when you go live, and then it's right up front. And uh, you know, we learned some lessons on that. Okay, so I, I talked about, here's the systems that we're using. We talked about that, the, the e-gain systems that we're using, the SAP systems, e-commerce, we have an IBM WebSphere front end that was built for, um, to communicate with the back end and, and really be the face of what the representative sees. We do have one of those dreaded IVRs, old technology, but we can't get away from it because we've got, um, we've got a, a population of representatives that are not digital. Our pilot market had 5% of, of the representatives no digital capability. That's pretty significant. So this, this was a way for them to still maintain their order. And when I say non-digital, we got it away from paper by putting this in here. So we're, we're taking baby steps. And, and you, have to, you, know, you have to know your, your uh, population and, and who you're dealing with. Because I know when we started out, one of the um, premises of, going, of, of, pro, of promise was, by the time we deliver to any market, it's mandated that they will be 100% digital, except for the people that can't be. <laughs> so. And, and, and the challenge with that was, we didn't really find that out or understand that until we were probably three months away from deployment. So we built everything based on 100% digital and then had to back into some things. So it, it became a challenge. This is what our e-commerce system looks like. This is the, the new Avon e-commerce system, the production system right here. Um, where a representative can either, if she's currently a representative, sign right in, or if she wants to become a representative, she can, do, she can appoint herself online and become a representative. Um, on this spot, what I did here is, if you see this right here, this is actually where our virtual assistant is, and her name in the market that we want is Mia. Um, our, our pilot market was Canada. And we originally had, all through the plans, Ava as the name of, of the uh, virtual assistant. That sounded good, Ava from Avon. You know, everybody liked that. Until they told us that in French, that means nothing. That's not a name. You can't use that. So we said, okay, you tell us what you want to call her. And they came up with Mia. That's how, you, that's how the representatives get to Mia. Um, and the contact us under that, that's how they get to email if they want to send us an email with a question. Here's the actual dialog box with Mia. We type in the question, but everybody knows how those things work, but uh, that's, what, that's our version of it. And there's the contact us template where they can send an email to us. Uh, Egain Notify, I talked about that a little bit, but this is the message center where the representative can go in and see all of the different messages that are being sent to her, some that are generated by SAP because it's a status of an order. Um, it could be some other things, uh, marketing offers, um, reminding her to place her order, all kinds of other things. <clears throat> Through Notify, she has the ability to opt out of different communications. Um, by law, we have to offer this where if she doesn't want to get emails for marketing, she doesn't have to. So she can make her selections on what she wants to get and what she doesn't want to get. If she wants to be notified one hour before her shipment arrives at her house, we can send her an SMS for that. Um, she doesn't have to get that if she doesn't want. So I talked about eGay notifying. It, 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 it's really, it, it, it's, it's been a big piece that has helped us out in a, in a difficult situation. Um, 
it's, it's really the secure delivery of it. Um, it's configura configurable for different workflows. Um, you have the choice of delivery channels in it. We get tracking and reporting. It handles all the you know, hard and soft bounce backs and things like that. It's been a, it's been a product that's, um, like I said, it's, it's helped us out. Um, you know, why do we, we select it? Well, we were in a spot. No, that's, that's not the only reason. Um, no, it, it, it really, when I say we were in a spot, we did at that point actually go out to bid to other email vendors and message vendors, and they didn't have the capabilities that, that we had, plus our, already our integra integration that we had with eGain. So it, it just made a lot of sense on a lot of different levels. Okay, learnings. We had a few. Um, change management. Understand the magnitude of change. What we realized that we did to ourselves when we went live in Canada was we changed, it was like a perfect storm of change. We changed everything the representative was doing in terms of her interfaces with, with Avon. We changed all the tools that the ACC agents were using to support her. Um, and we did it all in one day, literally one day. We turned off the old system on a Sunday night. We all went to Canada on a Monday morning. And then we all ducked. No, <laughs> no it, was, it, it was a little, uh, a, a little rough. On, on the start, and and it, and it really is for change management, and, and you know, I mean, I, I joke around and all about it, but one of the things that we had to understand is that this is a pilot, and we have to learn from it. And believe me, we've got learnings on on how we're going to do things differently um, that that we learned, and 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 that makes a big difference. Um, you really have to understand who the change affects, changes everybody. We decided we're really going to look at rolling out change in waves if possible. Let's change some things prior to. Let's change things after. Let's not do it all in one day. Um, one thing we did that we learned that we should have paid more of attention to, we did, we did a day in the life exercise, which was a, a mock go live. And, and, and Avon sales campaign last in, in, uh, in Canada last for two weeks. So what we did is we decided over a, I think it was a five day period, we were gonna mock a real campaign for 250 representatives with live call center support in a test system, so it wasn't all in production, um, to really see what we would learn. And um, so we, we had a lot of people up in Canada, we had 24 inches of snow in two days that we were up there, <laughs> but that's what you get in Canada. Um, and, and we learned a lot. The biggest problem was we tried to explain some of the things we saw as, well, that won't really happen when we go live because it was a shorter period of time. Well, guess what? What we learned there, we should have really said, yes, we learned that. Um, average handle time doubled in when we went live, when we, when we did in you know, day in the life. Um, we started listening to all the calls, saying, well, this is because it's day in the life and the person was confused. This is a, you know, when we went live, average handle time doubled for a period of time. So my advice on that is learn what you learn and take it to heart. And engage in the active management. That's what I'm saying. It's like make sure you understand what you're, you know, what you're understanding, what you're seeing, and be active, even with your own employees. You know, we found out that a lot of our employees went through all of our change management training, went through all their new system training. Everybody said everything's good, and then they kind of panic that go live. So you know, you, you have to be prepared. Communicate and communicate. I mean, you, you can't communicate enough to your, to your own side. Um, we, we found that with our representatives, some thought we over-communicated, where we, we gave them so much information, some of them stopped reading it. 
even though it was really good information. So you got to strike a balance. Know your customers and employees. What is their likeliness to accept technology change? I talked about the 5% or so of representatives that do not um, embrace technology at all. There was probably another 5 to 10% that embraced it that probably never should have. <laughs> and, and, and I'll tell you a little true story, and you, you're going to say, that can't be true. Well, I, I was in Canada when we went live. And I was walking around the call center, and I stepped up behind an agent who was on the phone with, with a, um, a representative, an older, an older woman who was really trying. I mean, she was trying to do the right things, trying to be a part of you know, this new thing and excited about promise and, and all that. And I, I, all I could hear was the agent side of the, of the call. And, and I heard the agent say, right click on your mouse. Okay, then I silence, and then it's the thing on the long wire that looks like a little, okay, silence again. The agent who's sitting there at her desk turns over and looks at me and kind of like, like makes, like almost, she almost laughed. And she finally got off the phone with her and I said, well, what happened? She said, when I told her to use the mouse and she didn't know what it was and I explained what it was, the representative said, oh, I had that on the floor like a foot pedal for a sewing machine. <laughs> so so that, that puts it in perspective of, you know, for, for us, you know, we, we do, ha we have Avon representatives that have done it for 40 years, 50 years, and, you know, God bless them, but they're trying, but it's a little bit beyond them. So, you know, my, my, the message there is you can't force some things to happen. And understand your employees. We had a call center that had next to none attrition over like a 15-year period. Literally some agents on the phone for 10 or 15 years, um, which they were very proud of. As a call center operational person, I was appalled at that, <laughs> you know, because they just had people that were so familiar and, and just took it. They knew everything in their head, and then we changed everything. We're trying to change the paradigm in the call center. It's not about what you know, it's that you know how to find what you need through the knowledge base. That was a tough one, because they, they felt like we were taking something away from them, which th their human knowledge, and we were trying to replace it with a machine. And we tried to do change management for that, but that's still a challenge. And, and a sensitivity. We, we, you have, we have to be more sensitive to things like that. You know, listen to what you hear. We did a pilot, and the pilot is still, the pilot went live April 29th, um, and it really has been extremely valuable. I can't imagine going from a market that has 50,000 representatives to the one we're going to next with 1.5 million representatives. You know, if, if we went without a pilot and without these learnings, we would have had some really major issues. Uh, we learned from the Avon representatives. We learn from our own associates. We have an internal marketing research team. Um, just about a month ago, they did some extensive um, research in Canada with rep panels to talk to them. And not surprising, though, what some of the things we found out. New representatives, representatives have been with us for less than six months, absolutely love it. Love the systems. Love what it is. The old web system and the old system that supported them was really just a data entry, an order entry system for them. The new system that I showed you that picture of is a full merchandising system. It throws offers at them. It tells them what, you know, all, all of the things that, that as a consumer we see out there. And all of the new representatives love that. All of the older ones that have been around a long time, not so much. So it's, you know, it, it becomes challenging when, when you're looking to, when you've got a, such a large, diverse group of users. Um, the call center readiness, um, you know, I was looking at KPIs bef of that um, call center before we went live, and they were never great, never horrible. Um, 
really would like to push for, they have to be better than, you know, not really great uh, going forward because putting in a, a program like this, I mean, we had to upstaff and, and do some other things, but it's still, it, it was too much pressure on them at times and they didn't perform as well as we needed them to. And trust what you learn. That's, that's what I was saying also with the day in the life. Um, people like myself and others that worked on this project for three years, everything made perfect sense to us, so we would try to explain things. Well, you really got to take the perspective of the people that you're pushing it at, that, that are taking it from you. Um, the virtual assistant and knowledge-based content. I, I, I truly think for the call center, and especially a call center that's going from, you know, very archaic tools to, to bringing this to them, I, I really think that these are two of the biggest wins for the call center. Um, what we found out is you got to make sure you got the time to get all the content in it there, in there that you need. I mean, we, we were on such a timeline to get the project done, to get it released, that we got the project done and we got the virtual assistant working well, we got the knowledge base working well, and then we started putting content in there. We went live without as much content as we wanted. I mean, ideally, you should be able to think about what could any question the representative asked me be and get that in there. You gotta find the time to get the content in there. It, it, it's key. The, the knowledge base is not just an implementation and then it's there. It's a living, breathing thing. You gotta have a, a process of every single day when you, at the end of the day you run reports to tell you the questions that were asked that didn't get an answer. Now you know what other content needs to go in there. That has to happen. Um, what, and, and one of the ways of get, getting that information is we spent about a week or so doing what we called ad hoc testing which was we put about 30 people in a room and said, go at the system and try to register, try to place your orders, try to do your business. And there are employees, but still, they know how the representatives work and they went through all that information. And I told them, I said, write, any time you're at a point where you stop for an instant and you have to think about something, write down why you did. And I want to have content for that in there. It was, it was a good way to get the content, we just didn't get it all in in the right timing. Plan for a disruption. The best laid plans. I mean, we, we had great plans. We were all ready. We were all in Canada. And it was disruption. The shift to self-service, um, it takes time. It's, it's not an overnight thing, and, and you got to build that into your timing. I mean, we did have to upstaff. Um, we had to hold the upstaffed group longer than we wanted to, um, but just understand it's going to happen. Changing the paradigm in a call center from a, they know it in their head to they have to use their tools, that, that's a big deal. That's something you really have to work on. We did have longer average handle times. That will happen. You just want to be able to quickly um, get, it, get it down to where you need to be. I say prepare for worst case scenario. The good news is we had plans for worst case scenario. We never had to execute on them. So. So that's, you know, me as a 30 year in the business kind of person with implementations, um, it's one of the last things I always like to do is, is sit down and say to my team, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen to us and what would we do? So we were ready for worse than what happened. So that's a good thing. I would say, and, and be prepared to look at the data that you're getting every day from the call center. Why are, the represent why are they calling? Why are people calling? Um, because that, that, that goes a long ways into, into what kind of communication, what additional change management, what other things you need to do. Define and measure success. This was a huge project. There were many days when, when I look at the whole thing and it was like, and something happened bad that day and I'm not feeling good about it. But there was so much to feel good about. You know, we, we, we built a system that technology-wise worked, that, that really many of our people and many of the representatives were, were very happy about it. The ones that weren't were the, in fact, I'll give you a statistic. Over the first two campaigns, 70% of the calls 
came in from 15% of the representatives. So the ones that didn't get it really didn't get it. So, that, so we know that, you know, that that's, that's something we really have to look at. You gotta celebrate the journey. We've, we've been at it for three years, and now we've got, we've got three or four more years worth of implementations around the world. Um, we got to celebrate the successes, and we did have successes. We're very, very hard on ourselves as project people um, because you want perfection. Um, perfection is very difficult in the, real, in the real world, I like to say. <laughs>